Welcome to another session of AANS Operative Grand Rounds. Today we have Praveen Mumaneni with us from the University of California, San Francisco with the Department of Neurosurgery. Good afternoon, Praveen. Good afternoon, John Pierre. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me. Today we're going to discuss minimally invasive lumbar deformity surgery. So Praveen, why don't we go through disclosures and then we'll get on with the presentation. Sure. I'm a, a past consultant for Depew, and I do receive financial support in the form of a royalty from quality medical publishers, team publishers, and Depew. Okay. Uh, my disclosures are listed here, a consultant for Medtronic, Synthes, and a, a royalty within a med. So let's get right to the, to the meat of this. Um, let, let's talk about what are the advantages for minimally invasive spinal deformity surgery? Uh, I think the advantages are two. Uh, we want to try to limit the complications uh, and limit the amount of morbidity that we see and the blood loss that we see with this kind of surgery, and hopefully that will translate into a shorter hospital stay. And I think obviously it's important to point out that we're talking about adults as opposed to pediatric deformity surgery as the complications can be uh, somewhat different. That's correct. We're going to focus primarily on uh, adult de de degenerative lumbar surgery. For scoliosis. And why don't you uh, tell us what the main uh, risk factors you found in this multi-center review? So this was a, a multi-center review from the International Spine Study Group. Uh, it was uh, presented uh, at the national meeting at the AANS and uh, currently now is uh, in press at the European Spine Journal. But basically uh, looking at a large series of 950 some odd patients, uh, what was found was that um, the uh, complications uh, were really significantly associated with the number of stages of surgery and were associated with the type of surgical approach. Uh, the interesting finding here was the uh, complications were not significantly associated with the demographics of the patient, uh, their uh, ASA score, or their comorbidities. It was more associated with what kind of surgical approach you did and the number of stages of that approach that you did. Uh, so that uh, really um, set up the uh, case for perhaps trying to do these operations minimally invasively to see if we can lower the complication rate. What surgical approach had the highest complication rate? Uh, if you did an anterior and posterior operation, uh, that essentially had the highest complication rate. Okay, very good. Um, so let's, let's run through the goals of deformity surgery and then how they apply to minimally invasive surgery. So the uh, goals when you do uh, adult deformity surgery for degenerative scoliosis uh, really should be um, focused into restoration of balance and decompression and fusion. So if we go through this slide here, basically we want to achieve a decompression if there's a stenosis. You can do that with minimally invasive techniques. Uh, can you place hardware is the next question because these patients often need a, a correction with, um, uh, with osteotomies, and so hardware can be placed. Uh, even iliac screws can be placed minimally invasively. Next question is, can you restore sagittal spinal balance? And that's really the major issue with adult deformity surgery in the lumbar spine is to restore sagittal balance. The long-term studies show that if you restore sagittal balance, that's when you have the happy patient who has excellent clinical outcome measures. The issue with sagittal balance restoration is somewhat limited in what you can do in a minimally invasive fashion to restore it, and we'll explore that some more. The next issue is um, that you want to match the lumbar lordosis to the pelvic incidence of these patients, uh, and you want to match that within 10 degrees. And again, it, you may or may not be able to restore lumbar lordosis in a minimally invasive fashion. You can do it to some extent, but not as much as you can do it to an open extent. So I'll also say that's a maybe. And then the next question is going to take you a long time to do this. Initially, it will take a long time. There's a learning curve to it. And then you want to make sure that if you went through this learning curve and you did all this surgery, that you can establish a, su a successful fusion. Because the amount of bone graft, uh, bony exposure that you have is limited in a minimally invasive approach, and it's challenging to achieve a solid fusion. So we'll discuss all of these items. So while we're on the topic of minimally invasive deformity surgery, there are a lot of surgeons who do open deformity who question if you're making all these incisions all the way up and down the spine, what is the benefit? As far as I understand it, the benefit is that you're not uh, pulling all the muscles off the spine from top to bottom and blood loss, which can affect some post-operative issues. My question for you is, do you also see uh, a, lo 